Hello, everyone. Can you all hear me okay? All right. Welcome to another uh, exciting installment of the Peaceful Solution Character Education Teacher Certification course. And um, <clears throat> see, we have a very large, intelligent crowd out here today and probably watching abroad. Um, we're going to be starting tonight on Chapter 6. If we're going to start a fresh chapter here moving along and the title of the uh, uh, lesson is I can make a difference I can make a difference and um, uh, Chris in the last class did an excellent job of covering um, especially page 117 about how you know there is hope you know we can't look at things like it's not you know, there's nothing we can do uh, to change this world even though it's very chaotic and it's getting even crazier all the time you know we just have to remember one thing when we see these things taking place in the news and in and, and around us is that you know the people have not been taught moral character moral character would make a difference this positive moral character education and the peaceful solution would make a difference and it will make a difference if we keep you know plugging away keep promoting it not not just Talk, telling people about it, but also, you know, uh, practicing these things in our lives. People are noticing. People do make make note, and they do notice. You stand out like a light, like a shining light when you practice the peaceful solution, because in the world, you know, there's not very much uh, positive to see. So when we do practice these principles, it's noticeable. Okay, and um. I want everyone to turn right now to page LP6A. And um, that's the good beginning of chapter six. And it's the note to the teacher that we're gonna need to go through first. Now it says, in this chapter, students will learn that given the right motivation, encouragement and skills, they have the potential to be leaders. You know, as uh, we learn in other lessons on leadership, in the Peaceful Solution Character Education course, you know, leaders, you're not born a leader, okay? You know, uh, nobody's born being a leader. That They might be born with certain, uh, certain uh, traits that are conducive to becoming a great leader, but you have to be trained, you have to be educated. You know, training training's gonna make the difference, you know, because if you look at leadership, when we tend to think of leaders, or when we think of leaders, especially world leaders, you know, most people have a pretty negative concept of world leaders, but that's only because the world leaders, for the most part, you know, they, they, they do make some decisions that are correct and that are right, but, you know, they haven't been trained either, you know, they haven't been trained in the moral character either. And that's why we see such negativity. We see a lot of bad decisions being made that are leading people in a wrong direction. And if the leaders are, re are leading in a wrong direction, the people, of course, are going to end up, you know, also making bad choices, also in the wrong place. So we've got to get the leaders on board with this. And believe me, we've, we've, we've made a lot of uh, effort to do so. I think we've gone to Washington, D.C. at least 12 times. Uh, speaking to, to government officials, senators, congressmen, other people that will listen um, about the importance of moral character education in schools and throughout society. But it says we have that they have to have the right motivation, encouragement, and skills, and that'll give them the potential uh, to be a great leader. In fact, have you been teaching? In fact, you have been teaching them how to be positive, effective leaders from the first chapter of this unit. You know, that's what you need to, we need to remember is uh, everything we've learned up to this point is actually teaching ourselves how to lead ourselves. Because if we can't lead ourselves in a positive way, how would we possibly be able to lead someone else in a positive direction, right? So it only makes sense to learn all these uh, you know, learn about the morals, the values, the, the positive character traits we need to develop, and, and all the ingredients that go into making up a positive moral character so we can become a positive moral leader, okay? And that's what we've been learning all up to this point is about that leadership, self-leadership. 
It's vital that students understand that leadership is an integral part of developing and maintaining a positive moral character. And I know it's been said before that that word integral, it means it's necessary. Uh, it's, it's necessary to make a whole complete. It's essential and fundamental, okay? So, you know, it's fundamental and essential that they understand that leadership is an integral part of developing and maintaining a positive character, moral character. Children who are assertive, courageous, and have strong moral values are better able to deal with negative peer pressure and avoid risk-taking behaviors. You know, uh, uh, really, peer pressure is more, and I think I've mentioned it before, peer pressure is more of us being pressured from within because we don't really firmly believe uh, what we're uh, in these principles, you know? Because like I said, I think you wouldn't you wouldn't allow somebody to talk you into jumping off a 10-story building because you're sure that if you jump off that building, you're going to get hurt. So you're you're pretty solid on that, right? But what if somebody came to you with some glue to sniff? And they said, well, you know, I've been sniffing glue for years. Man, I'm fine. It just makes you giggle and pass out. It's no big deal, right? I'm okay. Look at me. Now, the only way we would fall for that is we're not really sure. We don't firmly believe. Maybe we ha maybe possibly we haven't studied it enough or we haven't researched it enough and looked into it and got educated about it enough to know that it can actually damage our brain and other organs. So we might fall for that. So we don't firmly we're not we're not firm enough about it in our mind. And that word that word assertive that we just read. The word assertive it means courageous and respectfully using positive character to guide your decisions. Being confident or being able to stand up for your rights or someone else's rights um, without overreaching, but in a calm, positive way, okay? Uh, without being aggressive or passively accepting wrong, like not... Um, what do we call it? Um, not compromising our positive moral character, but standing firm in a positive way, not getting worked up in irritation or getting, uh, you know, aggressive about it or anything, but just calmly, confidently showing what we stand for, right? And being, and being willing to stand up for other people as well, you know, other people that need help um, in a positive way. So it says, uh, children who are assertive, courageous, remember that word courageous does not mean jumping off, you know, your house with your bicycle or deep sea diving with sharks or, you know, climbing Mount Everest. <laughs> that's not, in fact, that's risk-taking behavior. I know a lot of people that have died climbing Mount Everest. They're still finding bodies, you know. Um, that's risk-taking behavior. So is deep sea diving with sharks, you know. Um, so courage is actually the ability to stand strong for what's positive, even if everyone around you is accepting and going the wrong way. Okay. So don't get courage. And the reason I say that is I've gone through a lot of public schools and I've seen that word courage, you know, they use it as a positive character education poster in the schools. And there's always a mountain there and someone climbing it or, you know, someone bungee jumping or, you know, something like that. So don't get that that mixed up. It's not has nothing to do with courage. Those are risk taking behaviors, and we don't promote risk taking behavior in the peaceful solution at all. Okay, your life is valuable, and so is everyone else's. All right. So um, these children, it says, are prepared to take a stand for what is right, even if they must stand alone. And that's really the definition of courage, right there. I should have just kept reading and closed my mouth says, teaching leadership to our children is about empowerment. P empowerment. Now, not like He-Man, you know, I got the power! And some sword, you know, or gun, or, you know, some kind of foolishness like that. But empowerment of knowledge. Remember, knowledge is power. How many times have you heard one of your students, if you're a teacher right now, we're all training to be teachers, but some of us have taught actual classes. 
How many times have you even said yourself, if I only knew then what I know now? You ever heard that? If I only, I've heard that from a lot of prisoners. If I only knew this before, you know, if I only knew, if I only had this knowledge, I could have avoided all kinds of things, right? So knowledge is power. It says, we must empower them to speak up and stand up for what is morally correct. In other words, we've got to convince them that what they're standing for is this positive moral character that they're standing for is solid, that it's tried and tested. It's not going to fail. That they can be confident that if they stick with making right choices, they're going to have great, great success in life, but they're also going to have a great reputation. They're going to receive great rewards and benefits practicing these things. We've got to show them that, you know, too many times children only hear about, you know, the consequences, making bad choices. Here's what you're going to get if you do this. But we've also got to empower them with the knowledge of, look, if you make the right choices and you practice a peaceful solution in these principles and concepts, this is what these are the rewards and the benefits you're going to receive. We've got to convince them, you know, our students that, you know, to, to empower them to be able to speak up and stand for the for these things with that confidence, with that assertiveness, calm, calm, assertiveness and knowing that what they're doing is right, knowing what they're standing for is right. So it says other concepts in the middle of the page here. By the way, if you're watching online right now, you can go uh, to the top of the, uh, the uh, official Peaceful Solution page and you can, you can click the book, the character book, and download it so you can follow along with us. I'm sorry for not saying that at the beginning of the class. Um, but other concepts that are going to be taught in this chapter is the importance of leadership within society of the, and the world. You know, society is like, for instance, you know, our, our United States, okay, but, you know, also the world. The specific character and personality traits of positive, effective leaders, we're going to learn about that. We're going to learn what a leader is not or what a le leader should not be, and we're going to lead, we'll learn what a leader should be the positive traits and skills of a, of a positive and effective leader. We're also going to ha learn how to use the skills of leadership to make positive decisions. Okay? Those are the concepts that are taught in this chapter. So as educators, don't forget about that word education and how important it is. You know, education, remember, getting all the facts. That's what a leader does. A leader... Think about it for a minute. If you're leading someone else, right, if, or if you're trying to be a teacher or a leader, you've got to be knowledgeable about what you're trying to get other people to get on board with. Okay? You've got to be very knowledgeable about the content of what you're trying to teach. Okay? So right now I'm looking at, I'm looking at future teachers right now that are paying very close attention, and that's important because you know, think about a school setting in a, in a classroom. And the children that are really paying very close attention usually do very well. But you've always got a certain group that will be goofing around, playing around, not really paying attention. And when that's taking place, did, did you realize that they're actually stealing from themselves when they don't get this information, all the information about a certain subject because... When the test comes around, when that test comes at the end of the week, they're not going to know how to answer certain things, okay? Like the child that listened very closely, paid attention, got all the information, took, went home, studied the material. They did very well because they prepared. Preparation is the key to success. But if we don't prepare, if we don't take it seriously, and we don't gather all the information that we can about a subject, we're going to be kind of, we're, we're not going to be very convincing, <laughs> we're not going to be very convincing. We're, we're not going to be able to impart that, empower a student to really, to really take hold of this. We've really got to know, we got to really know the, the material. So as educators, we often see children who are browbeaten, teased, and taunted by their peers. That word browbeaten 
It means bullied, intimidated, cowed, uh, intimidating someone into doing something with a stern, abusive word or abusive words. Okay, that's what browbeaten means. Um, and then also we see children who are teased, taunted by their peers. Think of how much their lives could change if they learned how to take on leadership role, a leadership role, and assert true values to make moral decisions. Can you even imagine? I mean, I've, I've seen a glimpse of it. I see it in certain students that take the peaceful solution, younger students right now. They actually uh, do take hold of these things, and it's really amazing to see the difference between children that practice a peaceful solution and children that haven't yet learned it. It's really amazing. It's, it's a very stark contrast there, and it, it's really great. Okay, those children are very enjoyable to be around, and they're they're very polite and respectful. Um, they're caring for one another, etc. The teachers they show teacher great honor. They're very respectful to the authority, the adults. It's wonderful, and I'm telling you, I it's what everyone wants. I guarantee you, parents want to see this. Parents want it. Teachers want it. Police officers want it, <laughs> you know. They don't want to have to deal with unruly, rioty, riotous mobs, you know. What they want is people that are going to be respectful and polite and treat one another with care and consideration and concern. That's what they really want. That's what the world wants. The world just doesn't have the peaceful solution in their, in their, in their clutches yet, but they will soon. Now it says... Um, um, it says, uh, okay, think of how much their lives could change if they learn how to take on leadership roles. Okay, so conversely, or on the other side of the coin, we also see children who have the ability to lead but are aggressive and violent due to past teachings or influences. Now think about that for a minute. Why is a negative leader a negative leader? Well, because they haven't been taught positive leadership skills. So they're only going off what the last leader did, <laughs> you know? or what they saw other leaders do when they were growing up in their lives, you know? Um, so they learned how to lead, but they just learned how to lead the wrong way, okay? And they're doing what they think is best or what suits them best, um, not really thinking too much about the people that are following them, you know, because they haven't been taught the importance of respect, consideration, care and concern for others. They haven't been taught these things. so. It's not really foremost in their mind. You know, when I think of when somebody tells me that, and I'm not saying every public servant doesn't want to serve the public, but I've heard certain public servants, when they say that uh, they want to run for office because they want to serve, they want to be a public servant or serve the public, I'm thinking, well, you can serve the public, public at J.C. Penney, you know, be a cashier, you know. Why do you have to run for a political office? Well, a lot of them want to run because they want, the perks, or they want the power, or they want the recognition, you know, et cetera, you know. So they're really seeking that leadership role for the wrong reasons. Should be to truly serve people, and that's what the peaceful solution gets in our mind once we learn positive character. We learn that it's not just about us. Remember what the last chapter was about? It's not just about me, okay? It's about everyone else. So instead of leading Instead of leading, they bully and they coerce others. Um, by presenting this lesson, you can simultaneously, now get this, this is what's really great about the peaceful solution. Simultaneously means at the same time, right? It says, by presenting this lesson, you can simultaneously teach both how to be positive, effective leaders to make a difference in their lives and the lives of others. So you can you can teach, you know, both 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 ends, okay? Um because really there's people that really have even in uh in what I what I would consider to be negative leaders negative leaders, I see a lot of potential in them if they could get on the right if they could get right to get the right information, I see a lot of great potential in them. For instance, uh uh, I better not name his name, but I, I will mention there was a president one time that I, that I, something I really admired about him. 
Uh, I didn't like a lot of his decision making and at times because I know it, it it you know did some harm to a lot of people in a lot of different countries. But one thing I admired about him is he never backed down off what he said he was going to do. And that's a positive thing if you've made a positive decision and you don't back down from it, right? So if we could just turn that around in the right direction and he would be steadfast for what was right and what was positive, is there something wrong with that? No, that's actually a positive leadership uh, skill. So it's just, you know, it's just turning things around and giving, giving people the right information. And uh, it says, so uh, let's go to, let's go to uh, page uh, LP6C. Turn the page. And uh, it says, I can make a difference. And the purpose of it, the purpose and objective of the lesson is at the top. And remember, don't forget, when you're going to teach a lesson, you know, always go over these things. You know, don't say, well, I've taught that lesson before. I know how to teach that. I don't really need to look at that. <laughs> no, Re refresh your mind, okay? Um, the purpose objective is what you're trying to get across in the teaching, you know, and you want to make sure that you get that point, these points across so you can say, you can confidently say that you taught it to the best of your ability. So it says... Um, the purpose and objective of this lesson plan, I can make a difference is, students will learn how to be moral, confident leaders. Confident, remember we went over that, confident. That means self-assured, believing firmly in the teachings of the peaceful solution, okay? They have to be confident in these teachings, okay? And uh, really, what better way to make them confident to not only impart the information, but also practice it in front of them, <laughs> right? And then give them the examples. You know, I, I love taking um, examples from the newspaper, newspaper clippings, re current events, and show them how these things apply in a real world scenario, you know, instead of just telling them, you know, show them some scenarios, show them, even tell them certain things in your past to help them understand better. But that's what we need to do is make sure that they are very confident in this material, okay? Uh, and but also they need to learn how to be moral. Okay, moral. Okay, let's 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 go back for a second and rehearse something here, because we might have some newcomers tuning in, and I want to make sure they understand when we say moral. You know, uh, there's a lot of different definitions of the word moral out there, <laughs> and uh, we want to make sure they understand what the peaceful solution says about it. So turn to page eight real quick, and we'll just look at what morals are and what they have to do with our character. But it says, regardless of culture, religion, or environment, there are some values that all people share, and these are called moral values. A moral value is like a line that divides right behavior from or wrong behavior from right behavior. People from all walks of life, young or old, big or small, rich or poor, share some of these basic concepts of moral values. You know, like, for instance, no one wants to be stolen from, right? In any country that you go to, does, does people like to be lied to? Do people like to be cheated? Do people like to be uh, uh, picked on or bullied or teased or taunted in any way? No. no. Every country you go to, there's, there's certain values that everybody shares. You know, remember, everyone's human. <laughs> um, they're all human. We all have the same feelings needs and desires you know we all have goals we all want to live and i would dare to say that most people on the place of this earth just want to live in peace they don't want problems okay so they don't like it when they're stole from they don't like it when they're teased or bullied or their children are teased or bullied or they're devalued in any way everyone wants to be respected and they should be respected so it says uh, people from all walks of life okay so it says um um, morality is divided into three basic categories, which is behavior and attitude toward all life, human, animal, and plant, behavior and attitude toward possessions and property, and behavior and attitude toward the environment. And it, it goes into an explanation here about these different uh, moral principles in regard to human life. I just want to go over this one because I really want to put this in our mind as we continue in the leadership portion. 
Moral principles in regard to human life means acknowledging and accepting that life is valuable and all people have the potential to contribute to society. Everybody does. And everybody has the potential to become a leader too. A positive, effective leader. Everyone has that potential. When you have a moral attitude toward others, you accept and appreciate they have the right to live in peace, safety, and security, just like you do, right? If you have a moral attitude, that's your outlook. And it says you can demonstrate a moral attitude by being respectful toward all people. This means not taking advantage of, you know, like exploiting or using people, but rather showing them care and concern, you know? Simple things, you know, that you can show care and concern, you know? helping people out, opening the door when they got a bunch of packages in their hand. I mean, saying please and thank you. You know, these are just simple little things that you can do, but it makes a big difference in people's lives when you're thankful to them, when you when you when you uh try to help them, when you encourage them to make better decisions, etc. Behaviors that now immoral attitude is the opposite you know that's behaviors that devalue belittle hurt and take from others both emotionally and physically behaviors that include name calling teasing bullying and discriminating cause others to feel inferior or you know less than others or beneath others and it disregards their worth as human beings and then physically hurting others means being an aggressive violent uh, etc so let's turn back over to uh, where we were um, get the page. Sorry, I, I broke my own rule by taking my finger off the page I was on. <laughs> okay, but I was on uh, LP uh, 6C, and uh, we're going over the procedure here. Okay, um, so what we're going to need... Um, well, let, let me finish this. The students will also learn that they can make a difference in the world around them by consistently demonstrating moral character and positive leadership traits. So they can make a difference in the world by their own actions and their own in their own sphere of influence. OK, you know, um, sometimes people's decisions that they make here in Texas can spread around the globe. But for the most part, most of us, we're not we're not famous people or anything like that. We don't have, uh, you know, uh, uh, we're probably not going to be doing things that people uh, on the other side of the globe will see. But did you did you can you believe that if I dump if I dump um, some waste in uh, the river, one of the rivers right here where I live, if I dump waste in that river. You know, that river, you know, the water goes around the world, right? It rotates. I think the earth is tilted on its axis so much where the water moves around, right? So you ever heard the saying, what goes around comes around? Okay. Well, that's that's exactly what can take place because that, that's not just going to stay in my area. It's going to go somewhere else. It's going to empty into a an ocean, and then the ocean's going to empty into another river somewhere, and that river's going to take it somewhere else. So... It's going to travel around. It's not just going to stay locally there. We can't be thinking that the things that we're doing, the choices that we're making are only affecting us or our small area. You know, these things do affect in many, many ways that you're going to that you're going to learn about as you get deeper into the peaceful solution. So uh, so the materials you're going to need, well, you can throw that cassette player out. <laughs> I don't think anybody has a cassette player. Those those were uh, <laughs> those are pretty anxious. I think they still sell them somewhere, but we don't use cassettes anymore. We actually use uh, CD players, but because um, there are songs and there are narratives and things in the Peaceful Solution, uh, if you have time to play them, you know, for your students. Sometimes you don't, but okay. And then uh, of course they're going to need their handbook. And in the procedure it says. Uh, we need to review chapter five, which is the ripple effect, character, society, and the world by asking the students these following questions. I'd love to be able to get your answers, but uh, I can't hear you right now. So um, I'll just ask them anyway and tell you what the book, the book comes up with certain answers that they might give. But it says, uh, in what ways does negative character ripple outward from the individual to society? Okay, and we learned about some of those things were 
by creating crime and violence in society, okay, which we see a lot of, okay, we see a lot of crime and violence in our society. I'm watching a lot of rioting going on, you know, a lot of uh, property being damaged, people being hurt, pulled out of their cars, beat up, things like that. Um, we see a lot of suffering, we see a lot of death. These are ways that negative character ripples out from an individual to society. We see a lot of financial burdens being placed on people because of bad choices people are making or crooked decisions that are being made <laughs> in, in higher places. Or um, uh, we see uh, fear, we see distrust, we see disunity everywhere. These are things that are rippling out into our society. Um, we see wars, we see diseases, which I think Chris mentioned last time, uh, these diseases, you know, they're not coming without a, some kind of cause, you know, um, they're not just popping out of the sky. <laughs> Human beings are doing things that are creating them. Okay. Um, if we could save, uh, well, think about it. How many trillion dollars are we in debt right now? It's something like close to 30 trillion now. And it's climbing, man. I think we've gone, I think we've spent, the United States has spent just in the last few months as much as they spent in uh, two Iraq wars. <laughs> I mean, there's, we're talking like $4 trillion just in the last few months, okay, with these uh, bailout packages or, you know, COVID package, et cetera. Um, and now they're talking about another one, a $6 trillion package. I mean, we're spending money that we don't have. If I was to do that, or you were to do that, there's a popular uh, radio uh, financial guy. His name is Dave Ramsey. He his I like I like some of his advice, but one one of the things he tells his people is act your wage. Act your wage, you know. And he says, debt is dumb, cash is king. Debt is dumb. But, you know, people are encouraged to go into debt. People are encouraged to go into thousands of dollars of credit card debt. I think the average American now owes about $45,000 in credit card debt. Okay? That, that's spending money that you don't have. That's not wise. But you know what? I found out that that is not being promoted in our society. I went to get a phone once. I won't say the name of the company. I think most companies do it. But I went to get a phone. It was an expensive phone. And um, they did a credit check on me. And at that time in my life, my credit wasn't very great because I made a lot of... No, actually, it wasn't because I was doing... I never had a credit card, okay? That was the problem. <laughs> they said, well, you've never... They did a credit check, and my credit history, there was none. And they said, well, we can't give you this. We can't just give you this phone. You're going to have to pay a $500. Uh, uh, you're going to have to put $5 down, $500 down. And I'm like, $500? I can't afford that. And I asked them why. And they said, well, you don't have any credit history. And I'm like, isn't that a great thing? <laughs> I always paid cash for everything I got. You know, <laughs> I didn't go into debt, you know, with a bunch of credit. And But I was punished for it. <laughs> they didn't give me the phone. And I always thought that, well, isn't that better if you don't, you know, go into debt? But it's encouraged, actually. I didn't know that. Um, but these are the kind of things that have 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 created this this ripple effect um, that's gone out into society. And there's so many different problems. Okay, <laughs> um, but we're gonna fix them. We're gonna fix them. Okay, we're gonna fix them through education. That's how we're gonna fix them. And uh, we're going to have a lot of help doing it, too. So the other question is, how does positive character between nations impact the world? Well, we haven't really seen too much of that, right, to be able to give too many answers. A lot of nations are at each other's throat. But, you know, have you ever noticed there's some nations you never hear a word about? Just quietly doing their business, you know, quietly, I mean, When's the last time you heard of uh, um, uh, Samoa, you know, or some other nation, you know, out in the middle of the ocean? 
I mean, most of them are just quietly going about their business. That doesn't mean they're making positive decisions in every case, but they're not getting their nose into everyone else's business, and they're just kind of leading a quiet life, you know. But we don't really have too many examples of nations getting along, you know. Um, I remember uh, watching a speech in the, uh, watching speeches in the United Nations in New York is kind of interesting because that's kind of how you get the feel of what they feel about each other. I remember a man walking in there once saying that uh, he smelled uh, he smelled Satan or he smelled the smoke of hell or something because he was looking at the other world leader he didn't like. And I'm thinking, man, how are we? Is this the United Nations? I thought that was a peaceful uh, deal, you know, where everybody was coming to try to make peace, you know. And this guy was like ripping into this other world leader. And I'm like, man, that's not that's not going to bring peace. You know, talking to each other like that, belittling one another and putting each other down, that's not going to bring peace. But nonetheless, you know, there if nations would get along better, they would start trusting one another and eventually they would stop all wars. All wars would stop. Now, here's our biggest problem with that, okay? And we had a stop all wars campaign back in I think 2012. We went to Washington, D.C., and we, we still have the van. It says, Stop All Wars, A Peaceful Solution. And um, because we know we're going to stop all wars one day. The wars will stop eventually when people are, are educated and, and, you know, they see the damage that this is going to bring and what it's bringing. But um, uh, the one thing that we're up against is that there's people in the world that are profiting off war, okay? Um we have uh, what you call um, um, military contractors, okay? Um, many, many military contractors that make weapons. And, you know, I'm not really thinking they're going to bed at night hoping that peace breaks out throughout the earth. I'm just not thinking that, you know? I'm, that would be like a used car salesman hoping everyone starts driving horses again, you know, riding horses again to get to work. You know, that's just not going to take place, okay? Um, so what we've got to do now, what we've got to do with those people is we've got to convince them, we've got to educate them and show them that, look, because it's really about money making. They're making a lot of money, okay? They're making a lot of profit, okay? So it's really just about money making. So what we've got to convince them is that, look, if you, if we stop the wars, if we can stop all the wars and the trillions of dollars that are being put into wars and the mass casualties that are coming from wars and the, all the different side effects of war, if we could put a stop to it, you would be richer than you are right now. Not only richer, but they would be moral. They would be moral, right? If they could do this. And, and they will, once they get taught, they'll do it. Because I've seen people that have that same idea on a smaller scale, of course. They're not making billions of dollars or anything or trillions. But I've seen people think the same way that they do in that mindset that, well, if we stop this, how are we going to profit? How are we going to feed our families or whatever? I've seen people that are taught the peaceful solution actually do a, a, a total 180 on that thought because they started to understand you're right. Man, think of all the, the hassle. The, think of all the, the time the energy, the the suffering that I could save myself <laughs> if I just practice these simple things, okay? And uh, once they saw that, they turned their life around, okay? So it's not impossible, okay? I don't care how much money you're making. If the principles are planted in your mind, um, your mind is like a garden, you know? Uh, if only weed, if only, if only weeds are growing in it, well, that's what you're going to get is weeds, right? I'm not talking about smoking weed. I'm talking about if you just have weeds in your mind, you know, bad, bad ideas, you know, negative character traits or, you know, <laughs> uh, all these different negative influences that you've been fed your whole life. If, if your mind is just full of weeds, it's full of weeds. But when you plant ideas or principles uh, from the peaceful solution, just basic concepts into people's mind, it can take, it, it's there. 
now they can consider it where before they couldn't consider it because they didn't even know it okay once it's planted there they start thinking about it um i got a call from a student yesterday that i thought i'd probably never hear from again because they finished their course and they called me and they said i can't get you out of my mind i can't get the things you told me out of my mind uh, I was just sitting in a traffic jam and I was getting upset and I just kept remembering what you said. <laughs> I just can't, I, now I want to take another course, you know, I kind of miss it. It's true. That's what people do. That's what people, you know, once they, and this is somebody that <laughs> wasn't very nice. Okay. But because the ideas are planted there now, it's, it's, it has an effect where before they didn't even consider it because it was never given to them. It was never told to them. So never underestimate the power of just a word or a concept placed in a person's mind. Okay, never underestimate that because you know yourselves. How many things have you heard where you went, wow, I never even thought about that. Um, okay, so uh, let me get back on the lesson plan here. So nations would get along better, start trusting one another, and eventually it would stop all wars. And man, that would be really great in so many different ways. Now, on the second, um, the second step in the procedure, it says, remind students that by demonstrating positive character traits, they can motivate others to do the same. When I was reading over this yesterday, going preparing for my lesson, I thought about a man that I did time with in prison. And uh, that incident that one night really made a big impact on me. And um, he was uh, he was in for murder. And uh, but he was schizophrenic. He he was on medication. He was you know I, I don't believe the man would have done what he did if he was if his mind was right. Um, he was very intelligent, very very intelligent man. But he couldn't really he didn't like being around people. He didn't like having a cellmate. Okay. But for some reason, he liked me, okay? And uh, and he said, you're the only one I want to sell with. I don't want any other cellmate. And uh, now, at that time, I wasn't educated about, you know, leadership or positive character traits or anything like that. In fact, the only leader I knew was on my fishing pole. <laughs> you know, I knew I needed to have a leader before the hook when I went fishing, but uh, leadership wasn't something I was taught. I didn't really consider it. I didn't even know anything about, you know, the positive moral character traits, et cetera. But um, I remember he was selling drugs in the prison. He was smuggling drugs into the prison and he was selling them, okay? Now at that time I had stopped using drugs because I had a really bad uh, episode with cocaine once where I thought I was gonna die. Okay, and I realized at the point where I thought I was uh, going to die that I really didn't want to die. <laughs> okay, I'm like, what am I doing to myself? And that ended it, man. I, 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 I didn't want any more to do with it. Okay, I stopped it cold, cold. Okay, but this individual, he was selling drugs. He was smuggling drugs into the prison. He was selling them. And I remember one night he laid out some drugs on the table which he didn't always do he always usually kept them hidden somewhere and he asked me hey do you want some I just told him nah man I said I stopped doing that stuff he's like what do you mean he goes how can you say no how do you how can you say no like that he goes this is a miserable place don't you just want to forget about this <laughs> And I'm like, nah, man. I said, I made up my mind. I'm not going to ever do that again. He's like, he's like, how? How do you do that? I said, I said his name. And I said, you just got to make up your mind. Just say no. He goes, oh, man, I can't do that, man. I said, yes, you can. If you just, you, you just got to make up your mind. Well, he didn't make up his mind. <laughs> he kept doing it. But he really respected. He told me, he said, man, I really respect that you can say no like that. Like, he goes, I don't know how you can do it, but I can really respect that. You know, he had a great respect for the fact that I could say no about, sir. I couldn't say no about everything, but I could say no about that. And people will look up to you and they will notice that and they will 
it gives them hope in their own life. You know, when they see that you can say no, it really makes them think, you know, if he can do that, why can't I do that? Okay, and the fact is they can all do it if they make up their mind and if they have the right information and the right motivation. Okay, the right motivation from a from a teacher. I'm, of course, I wasn't a teacher then or anything, but in that moment, I taught him that he could, that he could do it if he just put his mind to it. So, um, by demonstrating positive character traits, we can motivate others to do the same. Now, the ability to encourage others toward the accomplishment of a specific task is an important part of being a leader. Um, tell us, and you know, I'm not talking about emotional uh, speeches, you know, like where you give this nice uh, motivational speech and then five minutes later they leave the auditorium and then everyone's back to doing what they were doing. <laughs> you know, um, motivational speeches come a dime a dozen and they do help a little bit, but you know, a motivational speech is just a speech. People forget most of what they heard by then. They only remember about 10% the next day of what they heard the day before, okay? motivating others has more to do with our own behavior in our own life and the information that we're presenting and the encouragement that we're getting giving them behind it and showing them hey this does work okay they've got to really firmly believe in it remember they got to be confident they got to be self-assured believe firmly in the teachings of the peaceful solution they've got to believe it when you've got to you've got to you know it's not that you can you can do some kind of magic on somebody. I'm sorry, I almost ate my glasses. You can't do, it's not like you can just change somebody or something. It's not like that. But but the the effort that you put into it is going to make all the difference. You know, the effort that we put into it. Um, it says, tell students that today we're going to learn the meaning and qualifications for being moral leaders. Um... We're also going to learn that by consistently demonstrating positive character and leadership skills, we will make a difference in the world around us. Okay? And uh, remember page 17 that Chris went over last time, you know, about, in fact, let's go back there real quick, um, page 117, where it talks about positive character also ripples out. Um, I'm going to read this one little paragraph in the first paragraph. Um, it says, just as negative behaviors ripple out their devastating effects, positive character ripples out positive effects. And this is how we can affect others in a positive way. When we choose to consistently demonstrate positive character, the effect ripples outward, giving others hope that our society and world can change for the better. Remember, you're planting hope in them. You know, the people need hope. They need some kind of hope. They need to see us making choices that will encourage them to make better choices. They gotta see that it can be done. For instance, if everyone in the community decided to practice honesty, then there would be no theft in that area. There would be no mugging, pickpockets, burglaries. There would be no need to lock the doors to your home or car. And you wouldn't have to spend 20 minutes looking for your car keys every morning and you would save yourself a lot of uh, stress, right? I gotta tell you this, that drug that I was using I wasn't sitting here trying to make you, you know, I wasn't telling you that story because I'm trying to get you to think, you know, that's something wonderful or something. It wasn't. That's why I quit doing it. it. almost killed me. But because of my drug use, since we're talking about keys, I used to also do acid when I was younger. And, you know, that that's a horrible thing to do. You're totally out of your mind. And uh, I remember some of the effects, after effects of that I've had where, you know, I remember I, one time I was looking for my keys, my car keys. I couldn't find them anywhere, man. I was looking everywhere, under the couch, under the bed, checking all my clothes. Uh, I mean, I looked everywhere. But there was one place I didn't look. And I thought, no way, man. No way. So I opened the freezer, and there they were. That's from using drugs. You know, your mind can, even years later, you know, can have those glitches, those little glitches, you know. Uh, those are called consequences, you know, that come later on, okay? 
So you can't think, well, I got away with it, man. Yeah, I did it and I'm still here and I'm, no, there's going to be consequences. There's going to be things that you're suffering in your body your whole life, in your mind. Okay. So, so back to the reading here, it says there would be no need to lock the doors. Okay. And it says, if you forgot your wallet or purse in your school cafeteria, it would be returned to you with all your money in it. Now, can you imagine that? Have you ever had a lost item returned to you? Man, that's a great feeling, you know? And it, it, I've seen it done more times than not, actually, by different people that aren't even in the peaceful solution. I've seen people turn things in, didn't even think twice about it. And I, I've always thought very highly of those people, man. When they do stuff like that, I'm like, man, that's really amazing, you know? I think highly of somebody that puts their shopping cart back at Walmart when they're done shopping, you know, instead of looking this way, looking that way, and then leaving it. <laughs> you know, you always know when people know they're doing something wrong. I'm not even talking about children now. I'm talking about adults, okay? You know they know what they're doing is wrong because you know how? They're to go like this. They go like that. And then they look again, and then they leave it. And they usually leave it right next to your car, you know, and you try to get into your car, and there's all these carts around your car. But I think highly of people that do things like that, okay? Because it shows respect, it shows consideration for others when we do that. When we just take the extra time to just wheel that cart right over to the rack, you know. There's usually a rack right there, right? A few feet away. Um, I also think highly of the people that don't leave their diaper laying in the parking lot where I get out of my car and squish, you know, step on a pamper or something, you know, and there's a there's a trash can like three feet away. So I think highly of people when I see them put trash in the trash can. Something simple like that. I think very, very uh, positive thoughts about that. Okay. And I so people, I know I can't be much different than other people. I think when other people see us do things that are positive like that, it has an effect on them too. Okay. And it gives them hope. So the greatest challenge is to get people to believe this. The greatest challenge is to get people to believe that positive character ripples out and that it can have an effect in not only their home, their school, their city, their state, their nation, their world. That's a great challenge to get people to believe that, okay? Because they, they're looking at this like it's a giant, you know? It's like uh, taking on a giant. It's like, no way, man. This is too big of a problem. There's no way we're going to be able to fix this. But that's not true. And you, you're living testimonies. Everybody that's tuned in right now throughout the world, we got people all over the world and people sitting here right now, you're a living testament that that's, that's not true and you don't believe that. If you, if, you, if you didn't believe that, if you didn't believe we could make a difference, you wouldn't be sitting here right now, would you? That's why you're here. That's why everybody's here because everybody believes that they can make a difference. And I'm and 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 now we just have to convince uh, what seven billion other people. <laughs> it's not too big. Don't forget. Don't ever get discouraged by numbers or size or whatever else. These principles are a lot bigger than that. These these moral character uh, principles are a lot bigger than that giant out there. Okay. All right, so back to the page LP6C. Let me finish up on this uh, on number two so the next teacher can start off fresh. Um, so we're going to learn the meanings and qualifications for being moral leaders. We're also going to learn that by consistently demonstrating leadership skills, we can make a difference in the world around us. And then it says guide class discussion by asking students the following questions. What are some of the challenges facing our society? And it says the answers will vary, but may, might include homelessness, crime, war, or poverty. Those are some of the challenges facing our society. But as a teacher, I've got to tell you, um, even the homelessness, the homeless crisis, some of it's being created. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's being created to make money. Okay, and I've, I've got the information one day, I possibly will have time to share it, but some of these situations are actually being created because money is to be made off the homelessness or money is to be made off uh, the border crisis. You know, a lot of these people that are coming up from uh, Central America and the, and the, and that region, they're actually being encouraged to come and they're actually being uh, paid to come, but they're also in debt. 
to the people that brought them here. Even if they cross the border, they have to pay the people that brought them here. They become basically a slave to that person until they pay them off. So there's a lot of ingredients that are going into these things. And there's a lot of crises that are being created for money. And again, it's getting people to believe that, hey, we don't need to do all these negative things to make money. You know, if we if we practice a peaceful solution, we're all going to live. We could all live very, very, very luxuri luxuriously on this earth. Nobody would be without anything. OK, everybody could have the things that they need. OK, nobody, no one would be in want for anything if we were practicing if we could get everyone on board with this. Um, and it says, uh, some of the answers might vary, but crime, war, or poverty, like $30 trillion debt, the border crisis, the STD epidemic, the coronavirus, the racial violence, the divisions everywhere. It's like divisions are being created everywhere right now, okay? But the peaceful solution, we can solve this. Um, these are some of the challenges, but we can face the challenges we can do something about it and finally step b there on number two says on page lp6d it says do you feel that you can help to make our world a better place why or why not that's what you're going to ask the student in your class it says answers will vary but might include being a, being a, being an example by using positive character traits to interact with others can influence them to use the same and this will begin the ripple effect, okay? Remember that influence. Influences are very powerful. Negative influences are powerful, but so are positive influences, okay? Um, I've seen time after time after time after time, somebody does something that's positive and how it affects another person to where they think, you know, I'd like to try that. Maybe I should try that, see if it works for me, right? So never underestimate you know, the power that's in this book right here, okay? Knowledge is power, uh, and we can never think the problem is too big, but we've got to impart this knowledge. If we can get it in their mind where they can at least consider these concepts, that's the first step. And I'm telling you, once that's planted in their mind, once that's planted in their computer, once this program is programmed into their computer, they're going to have to consider it now because before they didn't know about it, but now they have something to think about. They have, along with everything else that they normally think about, now they have something positive in there that they can consider and hopefully make, you know, the right choice, which doesn't, which won't bring harm to themselves, others, or the environment. So that's all the time I have tonight. In our next class, I believe tonight's, uh, let's see, the 25th, 425 will be the next class Sunday at 5 30 p.m uh please tune in and keep coming y'all are doing a great job and uh keep motivating others to do the same thank you very much